So good morning, everybody. Good to see you. And today we're going to be looking at um, and focusing on the idea of symmetry. And um, so we're going to tap into to that a bit in our world today and, and just see what arises. So I looked up the word symmetry actually before starting today. And it's a really, I, I thought of perfection. That was so when I was thinking or sitting with what I wanted to do today this image of perfection came up. And then I remembered someone telling me once that perfection is never really possible because it actually, when I looked at perfection, it actually means finished or complete. And nothing is ever truly finished or complete, I suppose, until it's dead. So when we look at the natural world, the live world, um, nothing can ever really be perfect. And so I was like, well, what's the next closest thing to perfect? Like the essence of what we're getting at when we say perfect. And I thought of symmetry. And um, symmetry means harmony of elements. So I really, I love that, um, that idea of, um, of a harmony of, like having a harmony of elements. And so just think about that today when, we, um, when we're doing our practice, imagine or think about the, the harmony of elements when, when I'm guiding you today. So everyone go ahead and get your comfortable spot. Hello, good morning. Hi, hi. All right. Um, yeah, so get in a nice cozy spot. Looks like a lot of people are bundled up today. So maybe all across the country, we're, we're feeling the chill. <laughs> yeah, burr. Um, so go ahead and put your feet on the earth. And just let your body, your whole body sense what's happening around you today. We'll start with the whole felt sense from our bodies, letting ourselves quiet. And I will mute myself because there's um, sort of the, one of the upsides and the downsides of living on a fancy island is that um, everyone wants to blow their leaves around. <laughs> so you have lots of leaf blowers in the background. <laughs> so I'll, I will mute myself in just a little bit. But hi, Joy. Good morning, good morning. All right, anyway. We will, uh, yeah, and what I'm, what's coming to me right now is let's tap into, before we, before we get to our feet, let's tap into our backs. So you can close your eyes or keep them open if you want to, but I want you really to connect with the sensation and the connection that you have with your back body, as they call it. So just noticing the sensations that come up, if you have any feelings or emotions that arise, tapping into what might be happening behind you and your back body. Good work, everybody. So do your best to stay connected to that as we start our practice today. And we're gonna now move down to our feet, to the soles of your feet. So just send your awareness to the very soles of your feet right now, connecting with each of your toes, from your big toe, the middle toes, and all the way to your pinky toe. And then to your pad of your foot, and then to the heel. Just feeling it in connection with whatever you're wearing right now, if it's a sock or a slipper, or maybe it's bare feet. And then letting that connection go deeper into the floor, the ground that you're connected to, all the way down, travel all the way down to the earth beneath your feet. And then just let yourself feel that sense of groundedness on the earth and with the earth. Though the earth isn't always a grounded place necessarily when she's moving and shaking, but Hopefully right now, the earth is feeling stable where you are. So let yourself feel that sense of stability of the earth herself right now. And then you can just allow that sense of stability in your next breath in to rise up into your own body, bringing that stability into your own trunk, 
all the way up through your body, through your hips, your spine, your shoulders, your neck, and then all the way out through the crown of your head. And just do a couple of breaths like this. So allowing your breath to, allowing your breath to go in and out and each in breath, bringing that stability in and on your exhale, just letting go whatever you don't need right now. Noticing how it feels to bring stability into your body, to bring the groundedness of the earth. Knowing that something or someone else has got you right now, they're holding you up. You don't have to work quite so hard. Nice work and just noticing if you're still connected to the back of your body. Is your awareness back there while it's also deep within yourself and in the earth? And if your eyes are closed, you can keep them closed and we'll bring our attention now to our ears, listening to the sounds in all directions first. And if there's a sound that's particularly prominent, again, whether you're inside or outside, it doesn't matter. You can do this practice in all places. So draw your attention and let yourself travel to that sound that's the most prominent. And just say hello to it this morning. Get to know it a little bit this morning. You can shift yourself to a sound that's a bit more subtle and quiet. And then just notice if or how those two sounds might interact with one another. Is there any connection between the two of them? Or are they really truly unique and independent of one another? And before we open our eyes, I'd like you to send your awareness behind you again. Noticing the sounds and the sensations that are behind you while you're still tuning in to the other sounds, that prominent one and the more subtle sound. Can you hold all of them in your awareness right now? Okay, and then when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes and just allow your gaze to fall on whatever it falls on first. Whether it's near or far, it doesn't matter this morning. Just allow your eyes to stay soft. The eyes of the doe, as they say, really gentle eyes, gentle vision. 
and then choose one point to look at just one aspect of if it's a tree maybe it's a leaf that you look at or part of a car whatever it might be it doesn't matter just focus on that one point and then allow your vision to expand in all directions out from that point and as you do so allow it to soften as you go Is there anything new that you've picked up in your awareness since you opened your eyes and your vision has softened? Are you still tuned in to what's happening behind you as well? So today we're gonna to focus on the word symmetry in case you missed it when we started the idea of harmony of elements. So first we're gonna start with our eyes. So I'd like you to just allow your gaze to just travel around your landscape. And then when you find something that's inspiring to you, you can just pause. And then we're gonna take the next couple of moments and I want you to look for the symmetry, the harmony of the elements in whatever it is that you're looking at. And just really let yourself stay with that one element. If it's a leaf, stay with that one leaf. If it happens to be trunk of a tree, stay with the trunk of the tree. So we'll really just stay with whatever it is we're looking at for the next couple of minutes, all the while focusing on the idea of symmetry and harmony. Do your best just to stay with that one element, whatever it is that you're looking at. It's another practice of meditation to stay with one aspect of whatever it is we're focusing on. And even if you find your mind starts to wander, or you get bored, you wanna look at something else, see if you can bring yourself back to, again, whatever it is that you chose to look at.
And now you can allow your eyes to find the spaces in between the solid elements. So if you were looking at a leaf, go ahead and focus your attention on the spaces in between the leaf, where there's the gaps. And if you were looking at something solid, you can look at the edges around that solid element. And as you're looking at these spaces in between, just notice if it feels like there's a sense of symmetry with them or is there asymmetry in the spaces in between. Now you can allow yourself to continue to look at that element or at least the area that you were first drawn to. This time we're going to focus on our ears. And so we're going to listen for, try and isolate just one sound at a time. I'd like you just to listen for the symmetry in the sounds, or the harmony of the elements of the sounds. But with your gaze and your eyes, you're going to be focusing on that that object that you were looking at just a little while ago. Now this one's going to be a little, could be, it could be a little bit more challenging for some. And that is that maybe you were able to isolate a sound, and if that's the case, that's great. So keep focusing on that sound. If that sound's gone away and there's a new sound, you can choose that. But what we're really going to be listening for right now is the silence, the places of quiet on the landscape. So just like we were looking for the spaces in between, the object that we had been gazing at. Now we're gonna listen for the spaces in between the sound.
For some people, it might be easier to close your eyes for this part. If you're finding yourself distracted or maybe having trouble listening for the silence. And just notice as you are listening, if there's a particular part of your landscape that is quieter than the others or has more of that silence around it than other parts. Good work. You're welcome to open your eyes if you want to or keep them closed right now because now we're going to bring our attention inward. And you're still going to be listening to the sounds outside yourself, but now we're going to be bringing our attention inward and feeling into our bodies and just noticing where we can feel that sense of symmetry, the harmony of the elements of our own body. Just give a scan of your body, noticing where you feel a sense of harmony and symmetry. And noticing the places that you may not feel a sense of harmony and symmetry. Okay, and our very last activity for the morning, go ahead and just take a look at, look down at both of your hands. You can bring your hands in front of you. Maybe you can rest them on your lap in front of you, either palms up or palms down, just with the intention of looking for symmetry. So find the symmetry in your hands right now. all the while not forgetting the sounds that are all around us. So we're still listening to the sounds, most importantly, the sounds behind us.
Well done, everybody. So take the next moment to offer a sense of gratitude or blessing to those ones you connected with, and don't forget yourself. So give yourself a blessing in this next minute. All right, well, nice job, everybody. Thanks for joining. So you're welcome to stay along for our chat at the end. We always talk a little bit afterward, or if you need to go, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Um, so yeah, I'd love to hear what came up for people around this topic of symmetry and harmony. And um, the idea just came to me today, as it often does, it's just sort of uh, from somewhere <laughs> and um, but then I often ask myself like all right so what does this have to do with birds you know because we're here for a bird sit and uh, what I thought about was at least what I was looking at in the moment the sense of symmetry that it's really important again if you want to improve your skills as a birder to become comfortable and knowledgeable about those ones, the birds that are familiar and consistent in your area because, and their sounds, so their sounds are a sense of harmony on your landscape, right? That they're, they're the, the baseline, as we might call it, something that we're used to hearing all the time. And then when a new sound comes in, something that might throw that symmetry off a little bit, like, oh, there's this thing that's different, you know, this different sound has come in. It's good to, uh, be aware of that. And so these practices can help us just hone that skill for ourselves. And so one is the auditory piece, but also the visual piece, you know, knowing how to look at a landscape and to see the spaces in between can often help you see those little ones that might be hiding in the bushes, or even sometimes the big ones that might be hiding in the bushes. <laughs> it's good to be aware of. So anyway, that's just one, one aspect of it, but there's so much more that can come up and arise when we explore this idea of symmetry and harmony. So I'd love to hear from folks what, what came up for you this morning. Did you see or hear or feel? Yeah, go for it, Anne, and then uh, Jackie afterward. Well, you mentioned in the birds, the symmetry and the same and the things that are different. And, and, and now you're outside and you're listening and you say, what, what that bird, that bird, it's, it's different. And it's a bird doing its spring calling. You're like, that's the Carolina wren again, you know, you know, because they'll just switch stuff up. But then I think, but just because it's different now here in the spring, it is symmetry because it does this every year. So it's just a long circle, not a short one. You know, it's the it's a it's it's another cycle. It That's might seem beautiful. different because it's different than winter, but it's all still maybe it's just I don't know. It's I guess yeah, circles, spirals. Spirals have yeah. beginnings and ends, though. Yeah. Or circles, circle right? A circle the circle. spiral doesn't. Spiral can just go on forever. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 That's right. I love that big, big, big picture. The big yeah. picture of symmetry. Yeah, that's right, Anne. Thanks for that. Uh, Jackie, go for it. So I was looking in the distance, looking for symmetry. And I thought, well, I don't see any, but um, I like the pattern of the branches and the leaves. So I was just enjoying that for a while. And then something else caught my attention and I came back and all of a sudden the symmetry of the diamond shapes formed by the branches just popped out. It's like, oh yeah, there's symmetry. There's a bunch of diamonds there. And then you said to focus on the space in between the darker lines. And then within, within the big diamond of big branches were little diamonds of little branches. So thanks for asking me to look a little, a little deeper. Yeah, and I love what happened for you in that moment where you were looking and you didn't see it at first but by turning away, like kind of just erasing the slate for a moment or cleansing the palette, maybe, if you will, and then coming back. It's like, there it is. It was there all the time, right? But somehow, yeah, that's beautiful, Jackie. 
Oh, rad, thank you. All right, who else would like to share? Yeah, Julia, please. Um, I was gazing at um, uh, honeysuckle, red honeysuckle. It's a major wheeler. And uh, uh, first the, the clusters of the blossoms. And uh, so I, I noticed that there is symmetry in, in the construction, especially of the, the different branches of the vines. The, the leaves are opposite. But there would also be symmetry if they were were not opposite. There's a word for that, but alternate, uh, <laughs> alternating. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it would be symmetrical along. You know that that pattern is symmetrical, but the branches aren't all going the same direction. And I was thinking this with the trees too. They're not all going the same direction. If they were, how boring that would be. You know, and so uh, I'm wondering if if an ingredient of symmetry is important in the overall diversity of things. And uh, I was, you know, the branches, well, I'm looking at bare limbs right now, you know, but the branches aren't symmetrical, although the leaves, the pattern of leaves might be when they come in. And I think it's more interesting. One one thing, being a musician, the silence is really important. Now I try, I try to tell my students this, it's the silence that gives meaning to what's in between the silences. And uh, so anyway. Oh, that's rad. I love that so much. It, I was pondering this myself this morning again, because sometimes these ideas just come and I don't know where they're going to go, even for myself, you know. And so I was looking at this leaf. It reminds me of a ginger plant. I don't actually know what this plant is. I'm new to this area, so, um, but it has a quite a big leaf. It's like this big. And I was looking at it and I was like thinking to myself just that it's, it's, there's, there is symmetry in there, but there's not. And then it reminded me of this, um, website I saw once where someone took photos of all the people like that we would think of these days as being attractive they had, like Leonardo DiCaprio and I don't know some other actors and actresses people that we think of as you know generally attractive people and what they did is they took their face and kind of like sliced it in half and then took like the mirror image like let's say the all right side and they, they plopped it on the other side and they weren't attractive anymore because our faces actually are not symmetric there's always something a little bit off like one eye is a little bit lower one nostril is a little bit bigger one you know this goes this way and that way and even though it might appear as though there's symmetry in like a beautiful shaped face there's really not and it's quite interesting you can google it like i forget what website that is but um you can look up symmetry in faces or something like that because it's really interesting when you see like that they have the, the picture of them normally and you're like oh it's an attractive human you know and then you look at a picture of when they make them perfect you know mirror images of themselves and it's like huh it's not so cute anymore <laughs> you know there are a few people i think they did like um oh what's his name I forget right now. He was married to Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt. They did Brad Pitt. And I think they took like the, 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 the cute side. And I was like, yeah, he's still kind of cute. <laughs> Some people you just can't go wrong with, you know, <laughs> no matter what. But but it was interesting to me just to, to look at this this giant leaf here and, and see that there's not, when I think of symmetry, I think of this like precision. And maybe there's not, you know, because what we were, I was talking about before, that the sense of perfection means something is finished and done, which also could infer that something is no longer alive because it's done. Um, but maybe the sense of symmetry isn't perfection. Maybe harmony actually, harmony means that there, there is something that's, you know, it's like the, the cold and the hot and there's like the harmony between the two, like the yin and the yang sort of thing. And that, yeah, so I'm just pondering all this myself right now. Anyone else want to share their experience? Yeah, Joy, Joy go for it, please. Um, I'm looking at a very old white birch that is definitely not symmetrical in any way, shape or form. 
except that I could find not, I didn't find diamonds, but I did find triangles all over it when I was looking at it. But when I picked one spot and focused on it, and then I went into owl eyes, which thank you, Christy, I'm getting much better at now. And I could see swirling around the branches of the other trees that are about 30 feet or more away. And they were sort of going around and the wind was blowing them. And that then it was focused on this one spot on the tree I was looking at. It was the neatest thing. It was real, I don't know if I'm explaining it very well, but it was very, very interesting. And then with the listening part, I'm looking again at this uh, misshapen old tree. And then the raven starts calling. And somehow or other, the two of them seem to be so connected. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure again <laughs> how, it, how it was, but that's how it's, it came to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Joy. I always love your reflections. And it's, I don't know if we're looking at the tree, but the the door behind you is reflecting a beautiful big tree. And I'm like, I wonder if that's the tree that she's looking at, the big old birch. Oops, you're muted. I have a lot of trees around here, so oh, it's, maybe um, not the one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It may be. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, any last thoughts? Stories, images that want to be shared before we go? Yeah, Julia, please. One more time. Yeah. Okay, because mine doesn't feel so positive. When you ask us to be aware of our back, I I'm, have, feel the back of the chair. And I got this uh, kind of message in my in my head, uh, the monkey mind. I said, nobody has my back mm -hmm. except me, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm, it, it, it was a little fearful kind of thing. And then I had... Um, a little bit of bird sound. There's not much because they're all cold. And there's crows. I think they're fish crows, but it it was just a little uh, call, you know, the kind of little conversational kind of thing they have, not not alarming, but this, uh, damn cold this morning, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. And I thought, well, I can tell from then I'm not, there, there's not a predator around. And I thought, you know, that would be really good metaphorically in life to be able to pick up on subtle cues like that to know if I'm in a safe space or if I'm not. I mean, I'm, you know, obviously a tiger is not going to come and have me for lunch. Um, but most of the time when I feel like I've been you know, pounded on or something like that. I, I was not expecting it, you know. And so uh, I thought, okay, the bird the birds know how to do that. Maybe I could learn from them, you know, to pick up on subtle sounds. There's a, a free ranging cat that comes through my yard and there's a, a cardinal nest. I can see this in this honeysuckle. I can't see the nest, but I know they're, I see them going in and building, you know. And it comes kind of by that, and I'm very concerned. And um, why did I mention this cat? Uh, so, so I'm I'm worried about it. I guess being a predator for those cardinals because he could climb up in the trellis and get into there. And I have had that happen before. You know, a cardinal's nest just get ravaged. Yeah. So um, I I was thinking. Yeah, I, I tried a, a live trap before in, in years past, and I got a possum, and I I felt so bad, because but I really got to see how beautiful they are. They're velvety ears and, and all, and I had the hardest time getting it out of the trap, but, but then that put me off doing that. But this cat comes during the daytime. I thought, okay, okay, I'll put it out early in the morning and see if the cat will go. I'll buy some nice cheap sardines and see what I can do with it. That's awesome. You know, Julia, what, what came to me actually when you were speaking this, and I don't want to take away that, I'm not trying to like sort of rescue you from your feeling or thought that came up for you, but the, um, 
how you were saying that what came to you was that no one has your back. And then interestingly, the very next thought, maybe not at least the way you told the story, was that you heard the crows and the crows tell you of danger. And I was like, the crows have your back, you know, like in a sense, and you're saying, wouldn't it be nice if I could listen to subtle cues like you just did? And you're like, oh, wait, no, the crows are just talking. There's nothing dangerous going on out there. Like you already know, you already are listening. You pick up on those subtle cues already. You just did it, you know? So just as a reflection, as a mentor, sharing that reflection with you that, you know, you're doing it already, you know? Yeah. So to, I'd like to add to that. We are learning with you how to open up our senses. Um, it is not something that we do normally or or all day long, but um, from an experience I had, I would like to encourage everybody to to take your message to heart in that we can have each other's back if we're paying attention. Uh, you paid attention to the birds they did have your back. They're letting you know what's going on. And I think with your help, Christy, we're getting better at, at understanding the animal world. But I would like to encourage everybody to pay attention to your humans around you. And the more you're open to it, the better you're able to either cover someone else's back, as I did once walking in a grocery store, I walked by a young lady down the aisle a bit away from me and I felt horror. I felt pain. I felt something from her and I grabbed my boyfriend and I said, I think she's in trouble. He's like, what? So we walked back just to keep an eye on her. And it turned out a boyfriend came into the store and accosted her and harangued her. So we put our bodies near her to let the boyfriend know that, you know, we're keeping an eye on her and followed her outside to her car. So if we are paying attention to nature, we can also pay attention to our our mm -hmm. human feelings. Yeah, very Thank much. So. That's, that's a big part. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. That's a big part of it, you know, that it starts to, it's sort of the blessing and the curse of it because um, by getting deeper into these practices, you do start to open up those channels for yourself. And that can bring up all sorts of things we're not expecting, you know, sort of awarenesses, things you tap into that whether we're ready for them or not, or whether you want to be aware of them or not, you know, and, um, but just, yeah, those, the, the more you sort of trust and um, ourselves, and we often are protected in our human world we sort of protect ourselves from others and keep ourselves at a distance you know in various ways and so um and sometimes it's important to it's important to you know not always walk around with our guard open which is why doing it in a safe space sort of contained right now is it's a good thing and then you know when you feel safe and open in other times during the day to, to let that part of you expand you know yeah yeah well thanks everybody this was a rich one today yeah, I really appreciate going here with you all. Yeah, Anne, go for it. Um, next Monday. Next Monday. The eclipse. Ah, is it the eclipse next I, Monday? I'm the in eight? a total in Ohio here, the eighth. Mm -hmm. So you? I just wanted to let everybody know, you know, most people have children who come in for Christmas and Thanksgiving. My kids are coming from California for the eclipse. So <laughs> we're going to be... We're going to be camping here at our farm and yeah so i may not be here next monday because it's 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 but it's 11 it's 11 30 eastern time so and so the you is like, yeah yeah it's a little bit after that because i'm i was i don't know if it's going to happen or not but i just happened to see julie zikafu she was in town i didn't even know it. i saw her uh, post on her website and she had a picture of the um angel oak which is this famous tree around here I was like i know that tree and i saw a picture i was like i know that woman and i was like julie are you in charleston and she was just like i am and so we saw each other for a minute and then i got i told her that i said i've been looking at the the arc of where the eclipse is going to be and i said ohio was one of the places and she's like yeah we're going to go somewhere and watch it and i said i'm i think i might i'm you know it's again it's a long shot I might try to get a ticket 
to go up and see it because I actually have time off of work during those couple of days. And um, I, yeah, I don't know. Tickets might be like way more expensive than I want to spend right now. But but right. I was excited because last time I had some friends who who drove. They we were living in Washington, and I was in Colorado at the time. My friends were in Washington, and they drove to a place where they got to see totality. And they said, and these are people who like just went just because it was kind of interesting and fun. And, but they came back and they were like, it was a life-changing experience. Like it really was transformational to, to witness <clears throat> what happens with the birds, with the stars, like everything. And so anyway, if anyone has access or the ability to do that, I would, I, I've never done it, but I'm, I, it's, it felt the, the their, their, um, expressions and like how they were feeling after they came back from it it was like it made me realize like i i really want to do this i really want to make a point of trying to get to see it yeah so that's rad and that you get yeah. to yeah so i'm yeah i just how do you anyone else able to see it at all no not so much not near any julia a little bit you're not too far yeah enjoy i need 95 percent 95 okay cool yeah cool. i think we're, we're i'm where are you where are you julia Oklahoma, Tulsa. Okay, yeah, because it's doing, yeah. I'm just west of Dayton, so yeah. In fact, Julie Zickafus and I have very similar properties. Uh -huh. We have like four, you know, where you, if you ever follow her, we're both battling honeysuckle and she's yeah. like two weeks earlier than me on most things, so yeah. Yeah, yeah I but think it's, she's gonna have to travel somewhere to go to like true totality, but yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for bringing that up. And so if that that's the case, then if I end up going um, and also get to experience it, then I'll message everyone and let you know that I won't be doing this. But um, but otherwise, and it's gonna be the day after Easter, right? So some people might mm -hmm. be with family and whatnot. So I don't know. Do folks want to just call it say say give give ourselves a break for next week? Or are people still feeling open to doing it? How about like thumbs up for doing it, and we'll just say like you can give me a wave for next. We'll, we'll skip this week, skip the week. Okay. I have to be okay. Okay, great. Well, let's skip next week. I'll send a little message out that says that we'll we'll skip next week, and who knows where we'll all end up being. But we'll, we'll find something cool to do. How about that? That's your only assignment. Find something really cool to do. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining. <laughs> See you later.